I'm Chevy, and today, let's discuss recovering from a convention. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the shed. We're back to normal after an amazing week in Columbus, Ohio at the Origins Game Fair. Wow. Wow. Uh, I don't know if you saw last week's episodes or listened to last week's episodes, but Origins was amazing. If it's not evident by my voice today, I'm still recovering. And that's because I was working the entire show. And I talked and talked and talked and talked some more. And that's a good thing. If I came back and I wasn't exhausted, that means it was a bad show. Coming back exhausted means that I really worked hard to broaden our brand appearance, to sell our products, and to introduce myself to all of our fans. But there wasn't just Portal Games fans there. I also got to meet lots of you. Lots of the viewers, lots of the listeners. Dozens of people approached me and told me thank you for what I'm doing. They thanked me sincerely and appreciatively and gave me constructive feedback and some constructive criticism on the show, and I appreciate every single ounce of it. It was simply amazing to hear such positive statements from everybody. So thank you. Thank you for coming out and saying hello and telling me that what I'm doing means something to you. Because we all have those, you know, I covered self-doubt last week and we all, I still wonder sometimes, like, what I'm doing, it doesn't matter. And I think it does. So, conventions are typically for a publisher, we get there early, like a day early or maybe sometimes two days early. We hopefully have all of our product shipped to the show on time. Sometimes that's not the case and we have to struggle to find our product, but hopefully if all goes well, the shipping company has our product delivered to the floor space where our booth will be. Then we spend a day unpacking everything, setting everything up, tables, chairs, shelving, banners. We have to unbox all the product, set it all up, price everything, open up demo copies and punch them all out, get them all set up on the tables, Set up a retail area where we can take your money or credit cards and and showcase small products. Put down flooring. There's all kinds of work to be done on that first day. And then after that, the majority of the show is spent interacting with customers and fans and friends. And it is exhausting work. It typically goes from 10 to 6 every day. We get in an hour early, so 9 to 6 for us. That gives us an hour to reset the booth from yesterday uh, to get ready for the rush. And then the doors open and we get flooded with fans who want to play our games. In our booth this year, we had four uh, demo tables where you could learn how to play our games. So we had three large folding tables set up with our new Cry Havoc game. And then we had a smaller stand-up table for one of our small two-player card games. And it's just a day... A full eight hours of nonstop talking. You're teaching games all day. You're interacting with the customers, answering questions, um, taking payment, all that stuff. And then at night is typically when we spend time together. So usually if you go to a game convention as a fan, you're going to go with a group of friends and you're going to hang out with that group of friends and have dinner and do whatever, play games afterwards. For us, meaning the collective group of exhibitors and publishers that are present, we are like a one big family. I have never met anybody in the games industry who didn't love games. You don't join the games industry because you needed a job. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's more lucrative opportunities out there if you're just looking for a job. You join the game industry because you love games, and we all love games. And so between us, there is no, there is very little, I don't want to say no, there is very little animosity between publishers. We are all really good friends. We are a family. We see each other 
month after month after month throughout the convention year. We hang out together. So after hours, typically there's a place where publishers, uh, distributors, that sort of stuff where we all meet up and hang out and play games together or just relax together, have some beverages and or you know even have meetings uh, we take a lot of pitch meetings and stuff like that afterwards so it's a huge thing and one of my favorite traditions is trade day now Sunday is a typically slow day most conventions Sundays close at 4 and so after 4 we break down our booths and leave and usually things slow down about 2 and we actually get a couple of hours where we can mingle and talk to each other and we do a lot of trading and trading is simply I take some of my product I go to your booth and say hey I'd love to give you this for that it's my favorite day no it's not it I really enjoy it it's my favorite tradition it's not my favorite day it's my favorite tradition and I don't purchase board games usually because on trade day I make out like a bandit. I happen to work for a company whose games are fairly sought after. Most people know us. Most people want to play our games. And because of that, I tend to end up coming home with a little more than I left with. Now thankfully, I drive to these shows. I don't know what I would do if I had to try to pack all this stuff home. But yeah, I come home with games. And what do you do with this stuff? You play with it, that's what you do. I picked up uh, the entire Rum and Bones line from Cool Mini or Not. Little amazing figurines. So I cannot wait to crack all, this is all Rum and Bones stuff, to crack this open and play it. This bottom one is Simmerg. It's a, a heavy Euro, no, heavy worker placement game. A little heavier than others. Uh, Valeria, I've heard amazing things about. Mighty Monsters, brand new from Queen Games. Uh, Town Center is supposed to be pretty awesome. So, this is trade day. This is what this is what happens when a group of friends gather uh, and appreciate each other's product. This is fun. Today, yesterday, the Polish team left at about noon, which means I was alone. Uh, for the last four hours of the day and then I was alone to pack up all of our extra product into my truck and bring it home and today I had to unload all that extra product and store it in Portal Games US which is my basement for now but this is the stuff that I can't wait to get into and play with and see uh, see what's happening so I hope you enjoyed the content that I put out last week. I am not super proud of it. It was content. Um, but because this show has always been very non-scripted, I've, I've always put it together almost completely off the cuff. The work that I did last week to put the first four or five, the first three episodes together for sure, was um, it felt it, it felt wrong to me it felt it felt forced instead of just natural like this conversation that we're having right now uh, let me know what you really think about last week's episodes in the comments if you were at the show and you said hi thanks for stopping by uh, please remind me in the comments that you were there because I have bad memories and I would love to thank you uh, so that everybody in the community can see that I hope that you continue to stick with me and enjoy future stuff. And tomorrow we will be back to our regularly scheduled content. Until then, thank you very much for watching. I will catch you later. Hey, Doc, wait. I want to ask you something. Today's random fact comes from topics.info.com. What 
is the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust. Aluminum is the most abundant metallic element on the surface of the Earth and Moon. It comprises more than 8% of the Earth's crust. It's never free in nature, combining with oxygen, sand, iron, and titanium. Its ores are mainly bauxites. It gives an example of aluminum hydroxide. That's interesting. I mean, I knew aluminum was uh, common, but I didn't know it was 8% of the Earth's crust. That seems, wow. That's a lot of aluminum. 